we're I'm here. here. Oh, Dave. Okay. How are you, buddy? I'm good, Dale. How are you guys doing? Oh, okay. So uh, we have a lot of red ink, uh, strong dollar, weak everything else. Uh, do you remember how to share your screen, Dave? That's that green. There you go. Welcome okay. back, bro. Thank you very much. Well, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to let me back on. It's been a couple months and a lot has changed at the same time. Not not much movement in in a lot of areas that we've been looking at together. A lot of range bound okay. action. Okay. Huh? So uh, you look at, uh, it's an interesting little map with uh, everything you look at. Uh, any reason that you, you know, kind of have this set up for watching everything? You know what? I've always liked this visualization. It allows me to look at a lot of different areas very, very efficiently. So this is this is uh, one of your panelists mentioned that he looks at the U.S. dollar every morning. Well, this is what I look at every morning, just to look, okay. just to see what's what's taking place, kind of temperature check on the markets. Okay, it's like your heat map. Exactly right. Okay, so well, uh, what are you thinking here? Uh, you know, handful of days out before the election, um, S and P's have finally, you know, VIX is broken out. That's the way it looks to me. And you have it like number one on your one day relative performance here. Um, uh, what are your views and what do you have conviction about? And if you don't, uh, that's fine too. What are you thinking here, Dave? Sure. Well, the, the, the one point of conviction that, that I do have is that there is going to be a lot more volatility over the next couple of weeks. Uh, during, during my weekend review this past week, it, it looked like the charts were setting up for for an upside breakout. And, and when I say upside breakout, I was referring to the equity markets in, in the treasuries and that all did not occur. So whomever was set up for that upside breakout was clearly on the wrong side of the trade. We didn't have strong conviction one way or the other. So we, we were just looking at it from, from a overall general perspective. Um, and, and so bottom line is this reversal here uh, forces us to reassess and we'll be looking at the charts specifically this weekend just to see where they are from a weekly perspective. Uh, those of you unfamiliar with my approach, I use weekly charts uh, as a primary and obviously we, we do other time frames, monthly, daily, et cetera. And we are swing traders. We, we invest, I, I enjoy investing in long-term companies, uh, long-term investments based upon long-term trends in the market. So when we last spoke, I spoke about gold and silver, copper, and uranium as, as really my three areas of focus. And, and right. frankly, they, they've largely been range bound. There've been some, some stocks that have done incredibly well, others not, not as much, but bottom line is as we look at the markets, as I, as I look at the markets today, I think given today's price action, it doesn't surprise me, and here's why. Um, we had we had multiple tops here. Uh, yeah. First on the S&P at 3393, then 3588, with with um, consecutive negative divergence here at the top, with RSI yeah. creating lower highs. And um, and so, whereas I thought this this third attempt would break out of this downtrend, it clearly didn't occur. So now I'm looking at the S&P as a potential retest of the 3300 area possibly slice through that all the way to 3200 as we get through some of the uncertainties that you guys already How about discussed. your uh, lower channel line that's a possibility that that is a possibility I, I just um, you have to be humble in this in this in this business so uh, I'm not looking at that far at this point but it is very much possible given some of the potential uh, volatility that you know we have in store uh, Contested election, coronavirus um, expanding. Yeah, that'd perhaps, be about uh, a what fifteen percent correction from the highs. Right. Uh, right. Um, yeah, that you know that would set up uh, some real nice buying opportunities. You know, oh, yeah. I, I'm telling people, you know, uh, get your shopping list out, wait for a fifteen percent correction. I don't care what it is. Um, I think that you know everything's so binary, but you know maybe you're looking at. Uh, cannabis issues or you're looking at uh tech but it was too expensive um I, you know i think uh, we're gonna get this pullback and then blast again to over four thousand s and p's but um, i agree with you i think, I think a, a melt up is 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 likely going to occur at some point but it's yeah. likely going to come on the heels of a very strong stimulus which yeah. as, as you know government they're not going to do anything until their backs against the wall 
Yeah, well, I think uh, twenty nine hundred would be motivation. Oh yeah, for sure. S and P's. I mean, they, you know, sometimes um, were you around in, uh, during two thousand eight during that financial oh, yeah. crisis? Okay, so you remember when they first brought TARP to the mm -hmm. floor and it didn't pass, right? And the market tanked. We went to six sixty six S and P's. The next day, it passed. Yep. Uh, yeah. So you know. Uh, uh, we only act when we're in the middle of a crisis and not, uh, you know, preemptively, usually after the fact. So I, I was thinking it was going to take some type of sell off in equities to get people in Congress to go to work. Yeah. So okay. when, I, when, when I've been looking at the VIX over the past couple of months here. Uh, it, it looked to me like it was it was setting up kind of a, a an ugly bullish flag here. And um, when, when I was looking at the momentum on the top right here, it was yeah. not only did we back test that trend line, but we 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 created multiple higher divergences. So even though right now the VIX is around around thirty seven or so, um, according to yeah. this metric, momentum here even as we closed last night at thirty three and thirty three and a quarter was higher than it was when we were at 38 and higher than when it was when we were at 44. Told me that the markets needed to to re readjust their kind of volatility and their positioning. So um, this spike does not surprise me. The only thing that will surprise me is if how far we go. Nobody knows ultimately, but we'll be watching very, very closely. Uh, I know when I look at that and it doesn't make sense to me, it looks like we could you know, that big um, bulge that you have at the top there is yeah, kind of, a, it's confirmed. Yeah, it's a confirmed high. And, you know, uh, it almost makes me think we could go to 100, but I don't even want to think about that happening. But um, maybe just a measured move from that little triangle you have, 37 to 20, 54, maybe 50. Yeah. Around those Something levels like uh, would not yeah. auto, would not surprise me whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then, so and, go ahead. And then, and as I go through the various other charts, you know, we were talking about gold. Uh, gold again was was positioned. I, I saw some of the daily charts. I obviously look at those as well. There was that bearish flag that broke down uh, this morning, and after yeah. in, in future trading. But when you look at it from a longer term perspective, this is a this is a bullish wedge. Uh, that's that's being created, and although a breakout here was possible, certainly that's not what what happened. So down we go, and and so I my personal target is around that eighteen twenty five level. I, I don't okay. don't know if it's going to get there, but if if it goes lower, that's where I expect to see some pretty pretty strong support coincides with this fifty RSI level, which it's found support at uh, multiple times. Um, but but gold, look, I I looked through about three hundred charts on a, on a weekly basis in the precious metal sector. And there are some names that are really strong right now. And, um, and either they're ignoring this particular move down or they're simply um, positioning themselves for what's gonna happen once this move is over. Because I think most folks still believe gold's going much higher over the, over the foreseeable future. When you're doing your due diligence, looking at uh, uh, mining companies, um, uh, do you uh, really dig into the balance sheet with debt? Uh, because a, a friend of mine really does a lot of work on uh, mining shares, and he's very excited about a lot of issues that don't have real big float because uh, these guys are making money. I mean, their cost of production, anywhere from 750 to 1200 So um, they're printing money now. They're way above production levels, as yeah. well as silver. So, I mean, for the first time in a long time, they're they're all making money, and it, it sure isn't going to take a lot of money flow. Uh, I think I think uh, something like Apple could buy every miner uh, out yep. there, every just Apple, uh, every miner out there. So, do you have any miners? Uh, uh, you said some of the names are holding up well, that uh, uh, today will be a good test to see how they act with gold down sharply. Uh, any names that you'd want to share? Sure. I mean, uh, off, off the top of my head, the one comes to mind uh, that that's that's actually a producing miner is Alamos Gold, AGI. 
Okay, Alamos. All right. There, there are um, that chart yesterday. I mean, we can we can pull it up here, but um, give me just a second here. Ever right. hear of a company named Torex? Oh yeah, Torex is yeah. certainly has been on on top of our watch list for quite some time. So when you when you look at Alamos in this particular daily chart, uh, not yeah. only is it is it in a bullish flag here, but uh, momentum back tested this breakout level, back tested the thirty eight level, and now was on the verge of a break above fifty. Now we'll see what happens today. My my guess is it's probably not going to be a positive day in this chart, but you, you want to yeah. look at the, the miners that are showing relative performance. I'm also looking at a lot of explorers in the, in the silver space, because um, there are a lot of, there are a lot of high grade explorers that aren't producing anything, but given the cash flow uh, that a lot of these majors are going to be running with, I think they'll, they'll have the ability to buy out these miners at, at really nice valuations for investors. Uh, Reina silver comes to mind, uh, Arcana, is another name that that I've been looking at. Um, there's a name in in Argentina, uh, Arba Plata, uh, Abra Plata. So there there are some companies that I have been doing more and more due diligence on in the silver space. And yeah. the more conviction that I have, the more I'm willing to invest of personal capital. Um, I wanted to point out one one thing, and just in the interest of time, Dale. Uh, so we were talking about uranium, and rather than going yeah. in, into uh, any any particular charts, I will kind of share with you my three top kind of plays in that sector. But Uranium Participation Corp, which is kind of the way I track the price of uranium, even though this is this trades currently at about a twenty to thirty percent discount to the price of uranium, which in and of itself is a is a potential uh, arbitrage opportunity. But Uranium Participation Corp, when you look at this chart, it's it's at a confluence of of support here. And we are we are at we are finding support at that 38 RSI level, which happens to be the the, br the breakout level from the March lows. And and so when, when I look at this chart here, um, this could be a turning point potentially as you look at the MACDs are starting to turn. And if uranium finds support at these levels and breaks out of this range, this could be a really, uh, really interesting place to look at the uranium miners. I mean, there's seasonality. That's uh, very bullish in Q4, uh, typically for uranium. And um, so long as the general equity markets just don't completely melt down. And obviously, we looked at that earlier. It's a possibility. Um, but I looked at a relative chart of the of uranium against the S&P. And we're looking at a breakout right now similar to what we saw in March. So is it going <clears> to <throat> happen? Anybody's guess. But if it does, this is where I expect it to occur. And there are some really nice long-term opportunities. Okay. Um, would you say that you're more bullish uranium than gold? I mean, I, you know, that uh, point I made about it wouldn't take a lot of money flow into all the gold miners to make them fly. Uh, if you look at all the market cap of all the gold miners, it's, uh, you know, uh, compared to things like mega caps that we have, it's nothing. And, and I, I think the expression is like, you know, just a, a, a water coming out of a hose would blow up the gold and silver miners, and uh, it would only take water out of a straw to blow up the uranium sector, because right. it's that much more infinitesimal than the precious metals. Yeah, I, I absolutely think that uranium... When you look at the supply and demand fundamentals in the uranium space uh, and relative to where they've been and what the needs are for all the nuclear reactors coming up all around the globe, I think uranium is not even in the first inning, whereas gold uh, may very well be in the third or fourth or fifth inning at this point. Um, obviously, I think gold is going much higher uh, longer term, but uranium right now, with the exception of Kazataprom, I don't think there's one uranium miner that's profitable at, at, at spot price 2950. So if if uranium is going to be a, if, if nuclear energy is going to be a fuel source for the future, uranium will have to be anywhere between 60 and 90 
uh, dollars. And right now, obviously, it's a fraction of that. So if if uranium does start moving up toward toward 50, you're going to see five, 10 x, even some 20 x returns in some of these smaller miners. Obviously, the downside is if it doesn't happen, there's there's just constant dilution. And right. um, that's just part of the game. Yeah, they're always doing uh, another secondary to that's there. You know, when you have a, a a public company, it's kind of like the Fed. Your stock is like the Fed's dollar. You know, you just print yep. them. You, you just put out more shares and dilute. Um, I, I, I what was going to ask you about this? Uh, uh, the uranium. Okay, uranium with uh, the election coming up. Is there one candidate? Um, could this be part of kind of like a green revolution? I mean, besides an accident, it's pretty clean. Uh, do you yeah. think that uh, if Biden gets elected, he'll embrace it? Um, has President Trump embraced it? Um, what do you think can be the future for the U.S. trying to move away from carbon fuels. You think it's going to be nuclear? Yeah, absolutely. I really do. I don't. I, I think both parties will will embrace it. They're, they're going to embrace it a little bit differently. I think when you're looking at the Republicans, their embrace will be more free market, and they'll they'll allow for perhaps uh, more simple permitting of, of lands and access to 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 less red red tape to get to to get things into production, whereas the Democrats will probably bring in more capital towards towards more technology and, and certainly m more awareness to the sector through their Green New Deal uh, policies. So either way, uh, right now, it, it's in a good spot. When you look globally, whether it's China, India, Brazil, uh, Europe, I mean, every day you see stories of new reactors coming on board. Uh, and with with almost no no companies to, pr to pr provide or produce them in the uranium. It's a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I, I wish I had the, 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 the point at which this is going to break, but um, when it does, it's gonna be really exciting. So when I look at my portfolio, when I look at um, the stocks that I like to, to, to own, companies that I wanna own, I, I, I don't wanna own companies right now that have debt. I don't wanna own companies that have uh, years to production and, and debt. That's this. They, everything will go up, but I, I look at the explorers right now first and foremost. Uh, one, the, the top name that comes to mind for me is Encore Energy. Uh, you have uh, Appia Energy is is up in Canada in the Athabasca. They are a rare earth as well as a uranium play, and we they just have top notch management. And and another name that really is interesting to me is Forum Energy. Those three names. Uh, I just feel like they're in, in a really good spot. Forum Energy is a copper, uh, palladium, kind of nickel deposit with uh, some very nice uranium properties as well. I'd rather I'd rather sit on those companies that don't have much dilution and that are just willing to wait wait things out versus companies that have massive massive amounts of um, capital outflows. And uh, right. these aren't uh, um, these aren't pink sheet or bulletin board companies, are they? They, they, they are. I, I okay. mean, they're right. they're they're on the Canadian exchange. Um, they're they're all kind of in the micro micro cap space between okay. 20, 20 and sixty million dollars. I mean, look, if you're gonna if, if you if you're gonna buy into the space, Cameco is 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 the way to go. The the large cap uh, name in, in the sector. They're gonna do incredibly well, but obviously won't have the same return profile as some of the smaller names. Where are most of uh, uh, the uranium mines located? Uh, are they in Can most of them in Canada? Any here in the U.S.? Uh, uh, because uh, you know sometimes if you're uh, in precious metal miners, you know all of a sudden something will happen in a country. Uh, you know they'll stop producing because of COVID. Uh, you know a fear of nationalization of mines in certain countries. Uh, do you kind of have a filter for uh, where you feel comfortable investing based upon where the mines are located geographically? Yeah, uh, well, there, there are really three, three major spots uh, of some three major jurisdictions for uranium right now, the Athabasca region being number one. Uh, you have Southwestern United States, kind of the Arizona, 
Arizona, Wyoming, Utah um, okay. channel over there, uh, New Mexico uh -huh. and, and Texas. And, and then Africa, you have um, Niger is, is an interesting spot, Nambia. So each, each of these jurisdictions pr presents different risk and reward. I think what's very unique about Africa is you have very low cost uh, miners there, junior miners that may be the fastest to, to production when, when or if the cycle turns. And, and they're going to be the primary buyout candidates by uh, Russia and China and so on. And so you might see a major rush into those areas um, when, when the cycle turns. You, Anything you, in uh, Mambia? Uh, yeah, so there's, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't remember which jurisdiction is which, but uh, Global Atomic is the is probably the best fundamentally positioned company out, out okay. in Africa. There's uh, Deep Yellow is another name that has been on the top of my radar. And, and one that we own um, quite a bit of, um, in addition to Global Atomic, is uh, Goviex. That's, that's okay. a name backed by the same Friedland family and, and, and Denison Mines. So they're, they're just okay. some really interesting um, players out there and with, with substantial... Yeah, it's interesting you brought up Africa, Dave, because uh, um, Shy Girl, I don't know if you know her, Tracy Shukart, uh, she's an oil analyst, and she was bringing up Africa. It's almost like, um, it seems like uh, Africa is really kind of like the new frontier for... Um, all of these uh, minerals, oil, et cetera, that, uh, you know, all these resources that have just been kind of dormant for a long time, that this could be perhaps Africa's way out of uh, poverty with the resources if the governments handle it well. I, I would certainly hope, hope for their sake that's the case. But the, you, you hit the nail on the head. The, the governments, every single yeah. one of these regimes is different. I, I will yeah. say, I think, I believe it's with, with in the case of Nambia, uh, most of their high paying jobs are from the, the engineers that operate a lot of these mines. And some of these mines are coming off, off of production. So they're incentivized in every way to bring new mines into production. And frankly, with the price of uranium where it is right now, they're just not going to come to production at these levels. So uh, at some point, the rubber is going to have, rubber is going to have to hit the road and, um, We'll see what happens. Okay, uh, you want to show? Uh, do you have a website that um, you know where you you share these ideas, or is it mainly on Twitter for people that? Oh, there we go. I do have a website, um, except this is t taking me to the back end here. We don't want that. Yeah, so it's my it's moneyology uh, dot com. And, okay. and, and basically what I try to do is I try to create one or two publicly available videos. Uh, and, and then I also do premium videos that go into more specific stocks. I update, um, for example, in precious metals, I do about 30 to 40 stocks on a weekly basis just to update the, the stop losses, the potential targets, et cetera. And, and okay. I'm starting to do some education. A lot of folks have been asking for more basic education. So I'm starting to do a couple of these uh, lessons and technical analysis. And um, so as you see here, we, we cover solar, we cover um, primar primarily we've been covering uh, uranium, precious metals and copper of late because that's that's where there's been a very interesting yeah. um, opportunities. But, you know, we, we go through we, we go through the various different sectors that we see uh, momentum coming into or potentially as contrarian uh, technical plays where there's some very interesting risk reward. So yeah, I, uh, I think you buy these if I'm right about a 15% correction, uh, there, there may be pressure on everything. Yep. And maybe that's going to be the window. And, uh, you know, uh, there aren't a lot of guys out there covering uh, uranium, Dave. So, you know, it's a service. Um, and uh, I could see it. Uh, I mean, when you talk about that, it's embryonic. After all these years, we've you know, had nuclear reactors, um, and now, you know, the consciousness about carbon, uh, I, you know, I think it's, you know, timely, your time is coming. And what I'd like to say to you, my trading warrior brothers, everyone who's listening to us now, that if you're not in the know, and you want to have a glow, go see Dave, at moneyology.com for 
some background and resources on the uranium market. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Dale. And again, the best way to contact me is either at Dave at moneyology.com or, or at Twitter, just uh, ping me and I'm very active there. So happy to chat with anybody. Okay, Dave, uh, you know, I wish you a great holiday season and uh, that, uh, you know, that your portfolio in the next couple years uh, blows up like a mushroom cloud. Thank you so much, Dale. I really all right. Thank you for the time and <laughs> yeah. stay safe and stay healthy and all the best to you and your family. Okay. Thank you so much. That's uh, Dave from Moneyology, a great resource for miners and uh, uranium. And that's going to be a wrap for us, everyone. Uh, remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. You know, I'm here to bring in people to give you guys some ideas, but besides, uh, scalping the euro right so check it out and let's see today is wednesday okay see everyone tomorrow okay i have the pup of wall street with us tomorrow so i'm uh, looking forward that's going to be his first interview with us don't just count your pips count your blessings and have a great day everyone thank you see you tom you're welcome everyone you're welcome laura monica See ya. You too, Grant. Take it easy.